I'm bullish on gold short term. I think potentially a year from now, it still might be back at this price if it pulls back with a market correction. I kind of feel like we're having a, a big rinse and repeat uh, of what's going on. I mean, I know every time it happens, it's a totally different scenario. Overall, I feel as though gold and silver are a very strong play here short term. Long term, we're going to have a hiccup along the way, but I am very bullish on gold 3,500 plus in due time. So I'm, I'm excited about the space. I really like it. I think silver will as well. It's just a little more volatile. I don't think we're going to see, you know, $50 silver till probably post some type of stage four financial reset. And then after that, I mean, some of my targets go up to about $82, $83 an ounce for silver. So gold and silver prices are showing resilience amid global economic uncertainties with recent trading sessions reflecting gains in precious metals. Financial analyst Christopher Mullen, renowned for his expertise in commodity markets, provides insights into the current trends and prospects for these safe haven assets. Gold is edging higher, continuing its recovery after a brief sell-off triggered by actions from the People's Bank of China earlier in the week. The yellow metal benefits from growing speculation that the U.S. Federal Reserve may initiate rate cuts as early as September, which typically bolsters non-yielding assets like gold. Additionally, political uncertainties in Europe and globally contribute to gold's appeal as a traditional haven. Chris Vermeulen observes that gold's chart displays a series of rallies and consolidations, which he interprets as a strong pattern. Despite his initial hopes for a more pronounced sell-off to create a washout effect, he remains confident in gold's upward trajectory, projecting a near-term target range of $2,650 to $2,750. Silver also shows strength, trading around $31 per troy ounce during European hours on Tuesday. The white metal's gains are partly driven by concerns over potential escalations in the Middle East conflict, with reports of continued Israeli offensive actions in Gaza fueling geopolitical tensions. Vermeulen sees potential for further near-term gains in silver, targeting a range of $34 to $36 over the next month. His long-term projections for silver are even more optimistic, with targets reaching as high as $82 to $83 per ounce. Join us as we delve into Chris Vermeulen's expert analysis. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Gold is a very strong chart pattern. So does silver, so do miners. Uh, just, just looking at this chart, I mean, from, from just a general purpose, I mean, it's been a series of like a rally, a consolidation. We've had multiple rallies and consolidations. There's a whole bunch along the way, but this is a very, very nice looking chart pattern. I, I was kind of hoping we're actually going to see a little bit more selling down here, a little bit of a washout to, to spook some, uh, some people out of gold and, and we might still get that. But to me, the chart is still pointing to about 2650, 2750 in gold. It's up flirting near the highs. You know, this is kind of that defensive play. I think looking at the big picture, uh, if we go back and take a look at how gold has kind of performed in the past, we kind of had a big super cycle start here back in early 2000. We went into a, a multi-year consolidation just before the 2008 market top. Uh, but going leading into that, we saw money getting nervous, moving into the commodity space, into gold and silver as a defensive play. And then, of course, when we had 2008 correction, unfortunately, when there's a market reset, a financial crisis, it pulls some of the best assets down, including gold, pulled back about 34 percent before we went off to the, the big kind of massive multi-year run. I believe we started a super cycle in 2019. We've been in a multi-year consolidation. And right now we're seeing that run going into the next, I think the next financial crisis. People are moving in because they're worried about the dollar. They're worried about falling stocks. They're worried about all kinds of stuff going on. And that's exactly kind of what we saw over here. So I believe there's a little more room for, for the precious metals to continue to act as that defensive play, people moving to a physical asset, uh, I do think it'll probably pull back to some regard. How much? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I'm bullish on gold short term. I think potentially a year from now, it still might be back at this price if it pulls back with a market correction. But uh, I kind of feel like we're having a, a big rinse and repeat uh, of what's going on. I mean, I know every time it happens, it's a totally different scenario. Uh, but overall, I feel as though gold and silver are a very strong play here short term. Long term, um, we're going to have a hiccup along the way, but I am very bullish on gold 3,500 plus uh, in due time. So I'm, I'm excited about the space. I really like it. Silver, 
I've got about 34 to 36 on the upside for silver over the next month or so. I think precious metals are kind of, um, to me, they're like the two, probably gold specifically, the lowest risk trade. I believe it's gonna go higher with low volatility, no matter what the stock market does. I think even if the stock market goes sideways or starts to pull back, I think gold will still keep moving up. I think silver will as well. It's just a little more volatile. Uh, I don't think we're gonna see you know $50 silver till probably post some type of stage four financial reset. Uh, and then after that, I mean, some of my targets go up to about $82, $83 an ounce for silver. So I think there's, again, lots of upside in these. It's uh, a little bit in the near future, but a lot when you look down the road a year, two or three or more. Financial analyst Chris Vermeulen offers a contrarian outlook challenging the prevailing view of a weakening U.S. dollar. While many forecast a decline, Vermeulen suggests the dollar may strengthen soon citing historical patterns during economic turmoil. He points to past crises such as the tech bubble burst, the 2008 financial crisis, and the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, noting that the US dollar typically gained strength as investors sought safe haven assets. In recent market activity, the US dollar opened steadily but softly during Wednesday's US session, following a quiet European trading session. This subdued response followed Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's semi-annual testimony before Congress on Tuesday, where he reiterated the Fed's commitment to maintaining steady interest rates for an extended period. Powell's cautious stance against premature rate cuts aligns with Vermeulen's expectation of potential dollar strength, as higher interest rates tend to bolster currency value. Vermeulen predicts that dollar strength could have ripple effects on safe haven assets, including gold and silver, which might experience temporary pullbacks during market volatility. Let's get back to the interview. I know everybody's talking about the dollar collapsing. I actually think it's actually going to do fairly well for a little bit. I can share my chart here. And uh, typically when we see chaos kind of hit, hit the world or the market, we tend to see uh, the U.S. dollar do fairly well. During COVID, uh, it had initially had a little plunge and took off. But we saw back uh, during the tech bubble, we saw the dollar do well. During the COVID crash, when we go back and take, or sorry, not the COVID, the 2008 stock market crash, the dollar becomes a defensive play only for a short period of time. Uh, but then it, it falls out of favor. And, you know, if we go back and we take a look at the big, uh, the, the tech bubble here, I, I believe if we look at the big picture for where we are right now, I think the dollar is still going to become that favored kind of play. And we're going to see the dollar rally back to 115 potentially 120 or so. Uh, but I do think after that, it's which is going to be a fairly short-lived rally, I do think we're going to go into a multi-year sell-off, much actually like kind of after the, the tech bubble in 2000, we saw a multi-year sell-off. And I think that's going to send commodities, it's going to send precious metals through the roof, uh, probably uh, cryptos because people aren't going to want to hold currencies. So I'm really bullish on the dollar here um, over the next I don't know, six, 12 months. We'll just have to see how the market unfolds. But I still think when you know everything hits the fan, we tend to see the US dollar index itself rally. If, uh, so that's kind, of, that's kind of my take. And of course, if it rallies and we see chaos hit the markets, there's gonna be forced liquidation, panic selling among investors. Even people who love gold and silver, for example, are still gonna be probably forced to liquidate and we could see them pull back they might hold their value fairly well compared to other assets, but I think the rising dollar, I think um, you know, a weak weak economy coming and, and downturn in the stock market will will pull on a lot of other assets while the dollar, I think, can float higher. Follow market trends. Right now, to me, the big picture, I'm looking at the dollar at a kind of a bigger, bigger picture here. I'm kind of bullish on it, not long the dollar so much. But uh a good example of what he talked about is like I have been bearish on the equities markets for like two, three years. I keep thinking the top's about to come. The big picture keeps unfolding. We're getting closer to a major recession to a lot of things now are really lining up as we'll probably see through our talk here today that points to a, a big reset, financial reset. And even though I've been wrong for three years, I'm still riding this market higher. We, we continue to ride it. So it doesn't matter what we think or feel. The key is we follow the charts. And until that market reverses and our trailing stops or our targets get hit, I mean, we just stay in that market. And that's the, the key where I think a lot of people get really messed up with stuff that Dale and I will talk about is they'll be like, well, you're super bearish on this and you're bullish on this. Uh, it doesn't actually mean that's the position you know I'm in, for example, like I'm bearish on the equities market, but we are long. 
Um, I'm just trying to, you know, the analysis, I'm trying to paint the picture so people are mentally prepared that, hey, it looks like there's a major top coming. The dollar is about to have a huge break. It's been trading sideways for a couple of years. Whichever way it breaks, it's going to be great. I don't really care which way it breaks. When it does, though, it will be a trade for sure. Given the contrarian perspective on potential dollar strength and its influence on precious metals, how should investors adjust their portfolios to navigate the intricate relationship between currency fluctuations and safe haven assets in today's global economy? We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments. If this video resonates with you, consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications. Thank you for being a valued member of our community.